Hello everyone, welcome to Cuck and Curbs Coding Class. Today I'm going to show you how to use variables in handlebars. Now this isn't a built-in feature into handlebars, but it's actually not that hard to add in. I thought it was really cool because recently I was working on something and I wanted to reuse the same part of the template twice. And it took a while to figure out, honestly. The documentation was very confusing. But once I did, it's actually extremely simple. And pretty useful. So let's just start. I don't want to bother with intro or whatever. Okay, so first things first, I'm going to just make a simple HTML file, handlebars.html, and we are going to, of course, do HTML, then we'll do ed. Okay, so this is going to be our JavaScript file that we're going to make in a second, and then obviously you want to also include the link to the library, obviously. Okay, that's all we need in the head. Now in the body, we're going to give it an onload attribute with init. This is just for demonstration purposes for our our little template that we're going to be template that we're going to make. And then I'm going to do div id equals output. This is just for demonstration purposes. We don't have to put anything in the div. And then script. Here's where we're going to make our template type equals text slash x dash handlebars dash template id equals template okay so here's how you define a variable first you have to do four opening brackets yes four because this is a raw block helper and i'll explain why it needs to be a raw block helper later then we just do def, or you can do var, you can change the keyword to whatever you want. I'm going to do def because, I don't know, looks cool. Name equals, unfortunately what I wanted to do is just have your variable name here, like this, but unfortunately I wasn't able to do that, so you have to do it in quotes, and then name equals before it, but still better than nothing in my opinion. And of course we got to do variable name and because this is a block helper light excel does not have support for automatically closing that so you just have to do slash def at the end of where you want the variable to be defined as now here's why it needs to be a raw block helper see if it's not a raw block helper and you can do this if you want if you use any like templating inside of here it will be interpreted from the context of wherever the variable is defined so if you like reference a variable in here, it's going to be referring to that variable from this scope. And if it's a raw block helper, it'll be different. Rather than referencing it from this scope, it will be filling out the template from whatever scope you refer to the variable from. And each one of those scopes can be different. Unlike this, where it'll be filled out once, and that will be the text no matter where you put the reference to the variable. So that's the difference. I think this one's more useful, so that's what I'm doing in the tutorial. And yes, the code does need a tiny bit of modification to support non-raw, but it's very simple, so not a big deal. And then I'm just going to do stuff. I'm not going to demonstrate any of that, but yes, it is scoped. Remember that. Then I'm going to do things, and here's how you reference the variable. You do two brackets the way you would do to reference any normal variable, but you do a greater than sign first, then a space, and then the variable name. So all I will do meaningless. And this will be replaced with whatever is in here. And if there are references to variables in here, it'll be from whatever context this reference is from. Okay, and then I'm also just gonna do and thing, and thing is gonna be a variable that we're gonna send to it through JavaScript. Great, that's done. Now let's do the actual important part, which is the little helper that we're going to build. So let's make a function, and I'm going to call it setup underscore helper. And I'm going to save this as handlebarsvid.js, because that's how we call it in the HTML file. And then I'm just going to do handlebars, and this should be capitalized. So yes, handlebars like that with a capital H, dot register, helper with a capital H in parentheses, and then whatever you want your keyword to be. In my case, I am using def, as you can see here. So it's going to be def, comma, and then we're going to make an arrow function with only one parameter. So it's options, op, op, 
Shins. I can't spell today. And then now, look how easy this is. Handlebars dot register, not helper, but partial. And that's what this is. A partial is basically something that you can reference, and it'll be filled out from the context that it's referenced from. And you can register it using JavaScript. So basically all this helper does is make it so you can register that partial from within the template. So register partial. And then the first thing is going to be the name. So it's options.hash.name. That's going to grab whatever is in this name equals attribute. And then comma, this is the dumb one, options.fn. And yes, that's a function, so you have to call it with opening and closing parentheses. Now, the reason I think this is dumb is because, first of all, that's a terrible name. It's just fn, totally meaningless unless you know what it actually does. And all it does do is, is give you the text that's inside of here. It just That's all it does. It just returns this text. So why can't it be like options.innertext or something? That would make way more sense, in my opinion. So... Then at the end of this arrow function, we just need to do return, because usually with block helpers, you return a string that it will be replaced with, but we just return so it doesn't send it anything. Semicolon there, and that's really all you have to do to make it work. Now I'm just going to make a little demo where it fills out the template so we can show off that it actually does work. So function init, that's what I called the function in the HTML over here. And then all we got to do is set up helper first before filling out the template. Now we do our template equals handlebars.compile and then we do document query oh man query selector template dot inner HTML probably already know how to do this and then var filled equals template and then what was that variable I referenced here? I called it thing, so thing. Ah okay, that's pretty good. And then finally last, document dot query selector hash output dot inner HTML equals filled. Okay, that's it. Literally six lines to make this work. And now I'm just gonna Open this in Firefox. And then we're going to click on handlebars.html. And look at that. It works. Things and stuff, which is how we defined our variable. And yes, we can even do thing in here. Things and stuff. Ah! And ah! Anyways, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Hopefully this was useful to you. And remember that we tried to do Node.js using the SpiderMonkey JavaScript engine, and now that project is dead, which is really unfortunate. Bring back SpiderMonkey Node.js.